In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make a really cool, super sensitive airflow detection circuit. This circuit will come in very handy for many different applications. Now the circuit you see here I found online, but I did have to make a few changes. It wasn't working right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link in the video description area to the original circuit. Then I'm going to post another link to the schematic for what's shown right here, which I'm also going to be showing you in the video. For this demonstration, I assembled everything on a breadboard and I'm going to be using my small power supply unit. If you haven't seen the video for this unit, it's a great little unit, check it out. Circle with the eye and you'll see it shown in the drop down menu. Anytime during this video, you can click on the circle or you can wait till the end of this video to see the link for that power supply. I'm also going to post a link in the video description area for a breadboard with jumper wires for those of you that don't have one, as well as other components. Now how this works, the circuit is built around an LM393 integrated circuit. It's a comparator. And on this particular IC, pin number one is the output, pin number two is the negative input, and pin number three is the positive. Pin number four goes to ground, and pin number eight goes to the positive rail. This circuit operates using 12 volts DC. This circuit does not use an NTC or PTC thermistor. Instead, it uses a resistive element. In this case, it's right around 50 ohms. You want to use between 50 and 100 ohms. And what I chose to use is a bulb from a microwave oven. I carefully broke open the glass envelope. You want to be careful you don't damage the support wires with the filament. Once that glass has been removed, you could take some quarter by quarter mesh available at a hardware store, make a little cover to go around the filament, nylon tie it around the bulb, and then you won't be able to damage the filament. To make it easy to connect the bulb to your circuit, you can either pick up a socket or just solder a wire there and one on the tip. How this works, one of the inputs is going to have a reference voltage set with the potentiometer, which is also going to adjust your sensitivity for the circuit. And the other input is going to be connected with that filament and it's going to vary. So what's going to happen when power is turned on to the circuit, the filament is going to have current flowing through it, not enough to make it hot, but enough to make the resistance of the filament go higher. Now when the wind blows or you go like this, you're going to cool the filament by doing that and it's going to cause the resistance of the filament to drop, which is going to alter the voltage in the circuit. When that voltage change is detected, it's going to light up the LED. Now there's a couple of things that you could do with this circuit. One thing you could do is leave the LED so when wind is detected, the LED will illuminate. But with the modification I made, you can also pop out the LED and resistor, put in a piezo buzzer right here, so an alarm will sound every time wind is detected, or you can remove the LED and use a relay to trigger something else with higher current. The modification I made in this circuit allows you to use these components right here, otherwise you'd only be able to use the LED. You can only sync 20 milliamps of current through that integrated circuit. Okay, let me power it up, show you how it works, and then we're going to take a look at the schematic. All right, 12 volts, 72 milliamps. Let me adjust the potentiometer. You can see right now this is on right here. So let me just adjust this. Rotate just enough to get it to go off. Okay, now it's off. So now what's gonna happen, watch how sensitive this is. It's actually incredible. I'm just gonna blow very, very lightly from about three feet away at that filament and you're gonna see the LED illuminate. Here we go. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna do it again. I'm hardly even blowing. You see it takes time for the wind to get to the filament. It changes the current flow through the filament which triggers the integrated circuits output. Here we go again. 
take a piece of paper, just very lightly. And you can see the light go on. Okay. Go here, so shade the light a little bit. And I can make it more sensitive using the adjustment right here. Sensitive enough that if you place that filament within a few inches of somebody's nose when they're sleeping, this will definitely trigger. Now I'm going to swap out the LED with the piezo buzzer. Okay, the current limiting resistor and LED has been swapped out with the piezo buzzer. Now I'm going to blow at the filament. Here we go. Once again. And the paper. And that is it. Let me show you the schematic now. Now before I show you the schematic, I first want to remind my viewers that I do have a lot of excellent circuits shown on my channel. If you're looking for a super sensitive parabolic mic, if you want a plastic pipe locator for pipes buried in the ground, or if you'd like to listen through concrete walls and floors, you're definitely going to want to check out my video playlist. I'll also post a couple of videos at the end of this video. Okay, right here is the LM393. Here's all your pinouts. Pin 2 is negative. Pin 3 is the positive. Pin 8 connects to the power rail, 12 volts positive. Pin 4, battery negative or ground. All these go to battery negative. Pin 1 is the output which connects to battery negative when triggered. Now the reason for the transistor, which I added that the original did not have, it allows you to handle more current because you can only sync around 20 milliamps of current through that integrated circuit. Right over here, that's your red LED. Current limiting resistor goes into the emitter of a BC557 PNP transistor. Current will flow through to the collector to battery negative, and some of the current flows through here through the 10K and sinks the battery negative through the integrated circuit. Reference voltage is going to be set over here. Voltage divider, you're going to have a 100K pot, 10K resistor, wherever you move this position to, you could have 100K on this side, 10K here, or it could be 110K here, and this side here goes to battery negative. This is also going to be used to fine tune the circuit to make it as sensitive as possible. The original schematic had the inputs backwards, so I swapped them. The voltage divider was on pin 3, and then the 7805 was on 2, so those have been reversed. Over here you have the LM7805. Pin 1 is the input, 2 is ground, or battery negative, and pin 3 is the output. There's an 82 ohm resistor, 75 to 82 is just fine. Make sure it's a half a watt or more set up as a constant current flowing into that three. And over here, you notice on the power going into three is where the filament is connected. So you have power right here flowing through the filament. Depending on how much airflow, the resistance of that filament is going to change, which affects how much current flows from this point to battery negative. When pin three's voltage drops below the reference voltage of pin two, that's when the circuit will trigger. Over here is a 47 microfarad, 16 volt electrolytic capacitor connected across the power rail to add stability. And it is simple as that, not too much to the circuit. Over here, if you want to ditch the LED, you're going to cut right here, cut right there. And over here is where you would add the 12 volt relay, 12 volt relay coil, 1N4003 rectifier diode or higher connected as shown in parallel and the purpose of that is when this relay coil no longer has voltage applied the magnetic field is going to collapse and you're going to have a high voltage spike which can destroy this transistor so that's why you want to use that rectifier diode and that is it i hope you enjoyed the video be sure to rate thumbs up subscribe and post links to this video on other websites and blogs also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.